I want to show you one of the more common templates that you'll be using, you see used a lot, and that is the master detail flow. Let's start by creating a new Android Studio project. Let's call this master detail. And we'll stick with the defaults, choose next. And we'll go with the default here with next. Now from here we want to scroll down and it's this master detail flow. Go ahead and select that and choose next. Now the way this sets up is you have what we call a master list, which is a list of objects. And when you select an item, it goes to a detail view. Well, here you can define what these objects are called. For example, if you were making an app for recipes and you wanted a list of recipes, you could name this recipe and then plural would be recipes and then the title would be my recipes or whatever you would call it. But this just allows you to set up some default for the names of the objects that are represented in this master list and detail view. Let's just stick with the default here and choose finish. Gradle may take some time if it needs to uh, download any dependencies. And again, you want to make sure that the uh, build processes are complete. Notice down here at the bottom you saw some quick updates that came and went. And again, you have the Gradle console. You can see kind of a detail of what it went through. And when it's completed, uh, you also have the event log uh, identifying exactly what's happened over time. So anyway, let's take a look at this and just see what it looks like first. So go ahead and run the app. Now, I've created another uh, virtual device. I have a Nexus 9. So now I have a phone for the Nexus 5X and then a tablet for the Nexus 9. If your computer has enough memory, enough RAM, and then you know enough physical space, and it's a powerful enough computer, you can run multiple emulators at the same time. Now, if you have real devices, you can connect multiple devices to your computer at the same time as well. Uh, and it doesn't matter how powerful your computer is if you're, if you're connecting to real devices. But I want to show you, if you press Shift and then select, you can actually launch multiple devices or emulators at once. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll select both and choose OK. Now again, it may take some time to launch the emulators for the first time. I've actually got mine already opened, so let me bring them up here. All right, notice that it's launched the app. And over here I've got the phone. On, on the right I have the tablet. Here I have the tablet in landscape. And you'll notice the layout automatically is given the list view is here. And I can scroll through and I... And see what's there. Then I can go ahead and select an item and notice the detail view shows up here on the right. If I'm on a phone, you will typically have the list view for the entire screen. And then I can select an item and it goes to another activity for the detail. If I'm over here on my tablet and I happen to rotate into landscape into portrait, I'm now in portrait vertical up and down, it's going to be, it's going to show the, the uh, master list first, and then I can select, and now I see the detail view here. And then, of course, if you rotate back here, it didn't account for it, but if I reload it, then it comes back to the correct, with both showing on the same time. All right. Let's go back to the project and stop the process. Let's take a look at what Android Studio has provided for this template. Now, uh, if you open this for the first time, you may not see everything open on the, in the project view. One thing I want to note, if you see over here, it says Android. This is a view that puts 
things in relation to kind of your most used uh, folders and items in order. This actually, notice how it says Gradle scripts and it's got uh, multiple items over here. This is not the actual folder structure on your computer. This is a representation specific to working with Android apps. If I select here, I can now go to project and this is actually a representation of the folder layout on my computer. So here I can twirl it down and this is actually what you're seeing. Um, notice we still have this app module and inside there we have source and from here um, we've got main and then Java and here's our class files and here's our res folder with everything that we're familiar with. Notice the, the manifest is down here inside the uh, main folder and then notice we have a build uh, gradle script here and a build uh, gradle script here this is for the module and this is for the project we'll talk about these at a later time but i wanted you to notice that there is a difference so if i go back to my android view then it just puts things in a logical order and it's easier to to see all right so where were we let's take a look at our app and notice that uh, we have a few different names and you recall that we use activity as a keyword on the class file to represent kind of a screen so we have an item detail activity we also have this item detail fragment and this is something that we'll talk about in another video when we talk about fragments but just know that this is a self-contained it's similar to an activity, but it represents a smaller segment of the screen. Here, then we have item list activity. So if I double click this guy, item list activity, this kind of represents the root activity. Now, when you are looking at a project like this and you're unsure which class represents kind of your root view or the main view. If you go to your manifest, we double click into the manifest. Notice here we have a number of things that are used to represent uh, the app and we'll cover these as we go through the videos. But I want you to pay attention to here you have a list, you have an activity and then you have another activity. And notice this one says intent filter and then it says action main as well as category launcher. This means that the item list activity is the main activity and that's the one that launches first. So if you're opening a sample project or somebody else's code and you're not sure where to uh, look for that, you know, the launch activity, the main activity, and it's not clearly defined, then your uh, app, your Android manifest is going to tell you. So we know that item list activity, and if you press Alt on the keyboard or Command on a Mac, and you mouse over, then you'll see the reference, and then again you can click and it'll take you to that activity. So again, we've talked about these shortcuts, and that's something that you can use here uh, to find where your main class is associated with that activity. Uh, if I go back to the Android manifest, then again, we have another activity that is listed here, and it's called the item detail activity, which we can see over here. All right, let's take a look at the layout files and kind of identify uh, what the visual elements are. Again, remember we use a keyword activity at the end of the class and then we reverse that and we say activity underscore and the name of the, of the class. And so here we know then that the activity item list XML is our kind of our root activity, uh, our root layout. And here we have a number of elements that we've got the app bar, which has a toolbar reference and then we have a frame layout and then we have the floating action button. So there's your floating action button right there. 
And then if we go back to activity item detail, here is the layout for the detail screen, which we saw before. And here again, you've got, this is the scrolling list uh, activity. Remember, we saw that when we looked in the previous video. We ha this has a scroll view and it has this larger uh, app bar at the top. And then it collapses, it's using what we call the collapsing toolbar layout that gets smaller as you scroll up and down. And then of course, we also have a floating action button here. So this represents the visual elements. Uh, if we go to, we have an item detail, which this represents uh, the text view that shows up in the item detail activity. And so this just represents the text field um, in relation to what we're showing when we go to the detail screen. Then the uh, item list, which represents the object that shows the item list within the the uh, activity. Notice here we have a reference to two items and you'll notice here that this says with 900 dp. This has a different layout based on whether um, the you're working with a tablet. So here we're referencing in code, we reference item list, but depending on the size of the device, it's going to load one or the other. And we'll talk about this in another video, how we can deal with what we call layout variants, where you can have a different layout size for the phone as well as the tablet. Okay, let's look at the source code for a minute and just kind of see how this runs. So I'm going back to the item detail activity. Um, again, we have on create gets called and then it, it instantiates everything that's on screen. And then we have other item, things that relate to the actions that happen on screen. If we go to the item list activity, this represents uh, loading of the content that shows up on those list items. And so, for example, when we're dealing with uh, a list view, we have, this is using what we call a simple item recycler view, which loads data. And then depending on whether the item is on screen, it will reload it or it will uh, repurpose that so that we're not constantly creating and we're reusing objects, visual objects, instead of creating multiple ones as you scroll up and down the screen. Notice here that you also have this folder called dummy and then you have a class for dummy content. This represents our data, our static data that's used um, within the app. And these are just a few functions that generate these random items and it happens to count to 25. You know, you may have seen there were 25 items and it just comes up with a, a simple description with an item and then a number. And so this just generates these items for us. In another video, we're going to talk about how to load data um, from a network like a web service uh, to parse the response and to show that in a list view. Okay, again, we'll cover a number of these additional features, but I wanted to introduce you to the master detail flow as it's something that is used quite often. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and look for more videos.